Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilán and in this video, we are going to see an example of how to add retry logic to a C Sharp application. The idea is the following. Sometimes we may want to do an operation and that operation may fail, but it doesn't necessarily fail because of an error in your code. Sometimes there are transient errors that can occur. Those errors are going to resolve themselves so that it is smart to add retry logic to our application. A library that allows us to do that in an easy manner is Poly. So let's see an example of that. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. What we're doing here is that we have an application, which is a web API, which allows us to retrieve data from an user from GitHub. So we have this GitHub service, and as you can see, we have an instance of the HTTP client class, and we're using it here in this get user data method. We are building the URL, then we are retrieving the response, we're ensuring that it was successful, and then after that, we're just returning the body of the response. And then we have a GitHub controller in which we're using that service, and we're just saying GitHub service, get user data, user profile, and we have a catch just in case there is an exception, which we're expecting when we do an ensure success status code, which is fine. This is all okay. This works. Let me press control F5 just to show you that this application works. Let me come here. Let me say my username, execute, and we're going to see that we have data from GitHub. This is great. Now, as we said before, the problem here is that this communication with GitHub could fail at any time for any reason, so it is smart to add some retry logic to our application so that in the case of a transient error, we retry a few times just in case the error solves itself. So let's do that. But first, let me introduce a random error here. So I will use the random class. Let me use the random class here. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say the following. We're going to throw an exception randomly depending on the result of this function. Just so you can see that now we're going to get random errors. So let me say here one more time, Gabby Lange, execute, and we have an error, and now it works. So as you can see, randomly, this will throw an exception. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use the poly library to add retry logic to our application. So let's say manage nuget packages. Let me come here and I want to install the Microsoft extensions HTTP poly package. So let me install this. I use this one and not the poly, I'm not using the poly one because this one has an utility method that we're going to use. So let's go back here and now let's see what we have. Poly allows me to create policies which are like a set of rules that will apply depending on a specific event. So for example, I can say, Hey Polly, please do something in the case that we have an HTTP request exception. For that, we're going to do the following. We're going to create a field which is going to store the policy. Let me say read only async retry policy. We're using a async retry policy because this action that we want to retry is asynchronous. That is why we're using async here. Now we're expecting to get an HTTP response message. So let me say here HTTP response message, and then I will call it async retry policy. So now let me configure that policy, async retry policy equal to policy, control dot to bring poly, and then let me put here HTTP response message dot handle. This handle allows me to do something in case we have an exception, an HTTP request exception. So let me open parenthesis here. And now what I want to do in the case that we have an HTTP request exception. Well, we want to retry. So let me say here, retry async. And in here, I will be able to say retry count. How many times do I want to retry? Well, let's do it three times and then comma. And something else that we can do is to say on retry. This allows me to run a function between each retry. We can use that to add some custom logic. Like for example, I want to log in the console whenever I have to retry. So let me say count and context and semicolon here. Exception is the exception that occurred. Count is how many times we have retried this logic. And context is a dictionary which we can use to pass data from here 
from the retry to this on retry that we have here. We're going to use that in a minute, but for now, let's just make this simple example. Let me say here, I need logger. I want to log, so I logger. Let me say I logger, GitHub service, logger, and then logger, log information. I will use a string interpolation and I will say something like retrying. And let me say here count of three. All right, now let's come here and we're going to do the following. I want to say bar HTTP response. I want to use poly. So let me say await. I will use the policy, async retry policy, execute async. And now I will say async here, lambda expression. And in here, whatever happens here, if it throws an HTTP request exception, we're going to run this and then retry here. All right, so let me come here. Let me get all of this and put it here. And now we have to return HTTP response from here so that we have this response here. And then we can use it outside of this execute async method. Now, before we run our application, I want to do a test. I want to see that everything works, so I will comment this out. I will comment the error out. Now let me press Control F5 to run our application. Let's come here. Let's say that we are going to use Gavilanche, execute, everything works. Now, let me see what happens if I force an exception. So let me say here, just so that we know that we're just going to get an exception, I'll just throw it. So let me say here, save. And now let's come back here. And now let me try this one more time. Gabby launch, execute. And you're going to see that immediately we get an error. And if we go to the console, let me go to the console. We're going to see that indeed we have retrying one of three, two of three, and three of three, which means that indeed we're retrying this logic that we have here because we got an error. Now, I mentioned before that we have this context variable here. This is really useful because we can pass information from here to here. For example, what is the value of user profile? I want to get that value into here. So how do I do that? Well, I can use a context. As I mentioned before, a context is simply a dictionary of information. So what we're going to do is that we're going to say here, bar context dictionary equal to new dictionary, a string, an object. And in here, we're going to pass name of user profile comma user profile and let me put this in another line so that you can visualize everything better semicolon here so we have a dictionary here with this entry so now i can pass this dictionary into my execute async for that we're going to do the following we're going to say here context and then in here i will pass the dictionary so the name of the dictionary is context dictionary and that's it now i can come here and I can use this context to get that information of this dictionary that we have here. So let me say here, bar user profile equal to context. And I will say user profile. And then I will say logger, log information. And I can say error trying to get the info of, and just say here user profile. And now let me press Control F5 to run our application. And we're going to see that indeed, we're going to be able to get Gabby Lange inside of that Lenda expression. So execute an error. But what I want to see is that indeed we have error trying to get the info of Gabby Lange. So as you can see, we were able to pass information from here to here. Now, something that I want you to see is that each attempt to communicate with GitHub it's happening right after the fail attempt, which may not be something that you want because you may want to wait some time so that the error can have time to resolve itself. So we can indeed add a waiting period before each retry. Let's see that. Let me come here and let me say wait and retry async. And now we need to fix this because now I need to pass another parameter so that we configure how much time we have to wait between each retry. So let's say here count, which is going to be one, two, three, depending how many times we have retried. So count, and this should return a time span from seconds. I can say that I want to wait one second between each retry, or I can do something like times count so that this will be 
one times one equal one second, then one times two equal two seconds, and so on. Just so that we have some time, let me use two here, so that we have some time to see the console. Now, let me just say here, let me put here the time, what time it was, time, day time, now. All right, so let's see. Let me save. I like to use Control F5 sometimes because this is imperfect. And by the way, if you select it here, you have to press escape and now it works. So let's come here and let's say user profile, Gabby Lange, execute. And let's go back to the console. We have here this time, as you can see, we have different times of execution. We have at the second 24, at the second 26, and at the second 30. Now, something else that you can see is that we have this weird message here. We're trying 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6. That is because when we use on retry here with wait and retry async, this actually is the time. This is time. This is the time to wait between each retry. So as you can see, we have six seconds because two times three equals six. Here we have four seconds because two times two equals four, four seconds, and so on. All right, so we got that out of the way. This doesn't really make sense anymore, so I will just comment it out. And let's continue. Now, there is something wrong with our implementation, and that is that, okay, this works for exceptions, but what about errors that are not transient? For example, let's say that we get a 404 from GitHub. It doesn't make sense to keep retrying a request with a 404 because that error will not resolve itself. That is not a transient error. Let's see that. Let me save and let's come back here and let's see that now it works. Of course, if I say Gabby Lange, let's just make sure that this works. All right. But if I use another username that does not exist, we're going to see that where we're retrying each time. We're going to see that we have 404, 404. As you can see, it keeps retrying a 404, but that doesn't make any sense. So what can we do? Well, Poly allows us to modify the policy so that we have more control over when we're going to retry our logic. Let's see that. Let me say here, or result. Result allows us to analyze the result of this method, of this execute AC method, and say, if this result have this characteristic, only then we want to retry the method. Let's see that. So as you know, an HTTP response message contains a status code. So we're going to use that status code. So let me say here, R dot status code. And an error that is transient is internal server error because that could be caused by some momentary error in the server. Another error that is transient is timeout. So let me say a status code request timeout. And with this, we're saying that if we have another status code that is not any of these two, we do not want to retry. Let's see that. Let me come here and I want to do the following. Let me put this outside of here because if we have a 404, this is going to throw an exception. So let me put this here. And now what I want to do is to see that we're not going to retry in the case that we have a 404. So let me press Control F5. So let's come back here. This refresh. So now we are good to go here. Let me say this. Execute. And as you can see, it returned almost immediately. And we don't have here any message indicating that we retried the communication with GitHub because the error that we got is not transient. Now let's see that if we have a transient error, then we're going to retry communicating with GitHub. So let me comment this out and let me say here, bar HTTP response. What I'm going to do is that I will just hard code the response. So new HTTP response message, and I will just pass the status code that I want to test. So internal server error. All right, so now, we can save and we're going to see that we are going to be retrying this one. It doesn't matter what I use. We're going to be retrying this one because we're receiving a transient error, which is a 500. And because of that, then we're indicating in the policy that we want to retry three times, as you can see here. Now let's come back here. You're going to see that we have an error, which is great. So finally, I mentioned you that I didn't install the poly package directly, but I use the HTTP extensions package because that one has a utility method that abstracts all of this in a simple method. 
let's say HTTP policy extensions dot handle transient HTTP error. And internally what this does is to handle the error, the HTTP request error, and also only handle transient HTTP errors. So that is great. We just abbreviated our code. Now let's come back here and let me put this in its final form. Let me delete this and this and this and this. And let me just say here return. And this is the way that you would use poly in the real life. Now let me save and let's see that this works. Let me press Ctrl F5 just in case. Let's come back here. Let's use it with Gabby Lange. We're going to see that we're going to get an immediate result. And if we use another username that does not exist, we're going to see that we immediately got a 404 and we didn't have a retry because the first one was a 200, which is great. And the second one got a 404, which is an error, but it is not a transient error. So as you can see, we added resiliency to our application using Poly. If you want to learn more about .NET, check out my Udemy courses today. I have courses about SP.NET Core with React, SP.NET Core with Angular, and also Entity Framework Core and more. Link with a discount applied in the description of this video. Thank you.